All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hate Live. This is the third and final segment. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is going to be the last video. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about E3. I already have done very in-depth videos regarding E3 right here on the King of Hate Vlogs channel on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube. So if you missed it this past week, I did one special video and recap per every single press conference. So you can check those out right now. But what I'm going to do is kind of summarize the things that I felt were kind of the biggest announcements and also talk about the biggest fails of E3, kind of just by going through my notes here, um, and let you know what I think, okay? Then I'm going to open it up to Q&A, Q &A, excuse me, not quality assurance, but question and answers with the stream chat, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I apologize for my voice in advance, I have a hot tea I've been drinking to try to help it, okay? All right, ladies and gents, here we go. So, E3 this year. Interesting, because I don't think definitively it's easy to say this company won E3. In fact, every company kind of had high highs and low lows. Um, some companies that previously had been dominating forces at E3 this year were kind of meh. Um, although some companies like EA that failed just continued to fail along their own fucking stupid paths of being completely out of touch with gamers, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, before I even talk about these... I want to talk about Nintendo, because Nintendo didn't do a press conference. They did their Treehouse video, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they had a few kind of big announcements, right? There's a new Kirby game in development. Um, they announced there's going to be a sequel to Pokemon Sun and Moon, an actual direct sequel, I guess, which is kind of interesting. And they gave a release date for Mario Odyssey, which we already mentioned is October 27th, the biggest gaming day of the year with three major releases coming out that day. Um, a lot of, of kind of... Okay announcements. I think the biggest announcement for most people was Metroid Prime 4 is officially in development. Which many people just thought that franchise was dead. It's been a million years, right? What, a decade since Metroid Prime 3? I think it's been more than that, actually. So, that's the truth, is that, um, really honestly, uh... It's cool news. The, the one issue that I have with Nintendo's big announcement at E3, almost no dates for anything. And what I mean by that is, oh, this is in development, this is in development, this is in development, this is in development. And if you're sitting here with your Nintendo Switch, you're like, that's great, but what the fuck do I play now? Because everything's in development. You know what I mean? We do have um, a new game called ARMS coming out tomorrow. And yes, I am playing ARMS tomorrow, so that'll be interesting. But after that, the next game is Splatoon 2. And then after that, you just sit on your ass till Mario. Because there ain't Jack Diddley shit coming out for the Switch. Um, so yeah. Um, there you go. That was Nintendo's conference. It was hilarious because we were like, Nintendo won E3. What? Nintendo didn't even give you any information on when the games they fucking announced are coming out and you think they won E3. Get out of here. Okay. Now, let's actually talk about the press conferences that happened. First of all, EA press conference. God-awful. Terrible. EA once again makes all the mistakes they're infamous for making. First of all, the press conference features all their sports games, which again, no one cares about. No people who are hardcore fans of EA sports games watch E3 because these are people who come back and buy the sports games every single year. They don't need to watch E3 to learn about the one new feature you put in, like the campaign mode in Madden. No one who already buys Madden cares about a campaign mode. You may have won over a few extra people by adding a campaign mode that maybe don't play Madden normally, but... E3 is not the time to be talking about, oh, there's a new animation feature, or look at this, NBA Live, you flick the fucking thumbstick and look at this. No one cares. It's a complete waste of time, and they spent probably about at least a third of their conference talking about sports games with zero effectiveness on anyone who's going to extra buy that game who wouldn't have before. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. They do it every year, okay? <laughs> All right. Also, EA, completely out of touch with the common gamer, EA thought that the best thing to do at their press conference would be bring in YouTubers and Twitch streamers to be part of their conference. So they had a montage of Battlefield 1 where it shows Twitch streamers completely 
fucking overreacting to things as mundane as, oh, I blew up a vehicle with a grenade, which you can do a lot in Battlefield, and they act like it's like the fucking amazingest thing they've ever seen. The guy even says, that'll never happen again, that's a once in a lifetime thing, and I'm like, are you fucking retarded? These people, these are people who overact on their streams to get views, and you put them on EA like it's something legit. <clears throat> it just shows how ignorant they are. And of course you had the YouTuber, what the hell was his name? Um, Jesse Wellens, who was supposed to introduce Need for Speed Payback and completely forgot everything he was supposed to do and then panicked and literally fell apart live on stream and turned it over to a game dev who then had to do everything for him because he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Do you see the point I'm making? No one wants YouTubers there. No one cares. Let the YouTubers cover E3. Okay, that's great. We don't need YouTubers to be a part of the fucking press conference of E3. We don't care. We're gamers and we're there to see games. We can watch our fucking favorite YouTubers on their own goddamn channels. We don't also need to see them flub everything and look like complete fucking asshole fake shills during a press conference. <clears throat> but here we go. Um, basically, it's so stupid because... EA thinks that they actually did something good. They thought that they were actually, oh, we're in the touch with the common gamer by bringing in their favorite personalities. When in reality, the common person who watched that press conference thought it was god-awful. And by far, EA's press conference was the worst one at E3 this year. 100%. I mean, just some groanable offenses. Uh, Battlefield 1's getting expansions. Dude, the game's eight months fucking old. No one cares about Battlefield 1 fucking expansions anymore. We're talking about new games at E3, not an eight-month-old FPS that no one, everyone dropped already. Um, and, you know, just kind of following that kind of line, uh, you know, talking about the seed graphical frostbite engine for fucking Project Scorpio. No one cares. No, one's, no one needs to hear about that at E3. We're the games. We're the good games. Not as the EA didn't have good games because the one game they did actually focus on was Star Wars Battlefront 2. And Star Wars Battlefront 2 looked really good. All right? It does. It looks like it's much improved. And it's going to probably be the, one of the best improved franchises because the first game sucked so fucking hard and had no content. This one, they directly listened to everyone's criticisms and they made it better. All right? But... I mean, you have to weigh and balance that with, like, segments, the groanable segments, like, oh, we donated millions of dollars to a charity. It's like, yeah, pretty much every major corporation does, but they don't all brag about it like you because you want to look good. You know what I mean? So EA, by far, still the most out-of-touch game publisher, and their conference was pretty much a joke, I'd say, except for the Star Wars Battlefront segment. Everything else sucked ass, okay? Um, <clears throat> Microsoft... With their big announcement this year of the Xbox One X, the most groanable name you've ever heard. Xbox One X. X-O-X. -X. <laughs> oh my goodness. Seriously, it's like X-O-X -X box. So now you got the original Xbox, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One S, the Xbox XXX. I mean, what the fuck? What a terrible fucking name. Did you do no market research to actually ask people if that was a good name? Because I'm pretty sure if you had a room of any number of people, the majority of them would just say, that is a stupid fucking name. Don't name it that. <clears throat> but, apparently it's coming out. It's going to be, what, 600 bucks or was it 500 I think it's actually 600 right, at launch. Um, they said that at the end of the press conference. Let me see here, because that was a big press conference. Yeah, $500 at launch. Um, the stats, the specs are impressive. But it was hilarious because they're pushing 4K video. Like, they really want you to buy this to play games in 4K. When everyone knows, right now, the vast majority of people don't have 4K TVs yet. Okay? They just don't. Um, and honestly, the common person who's going to buy a new Xbox probably would say, Well, what if I don't have a 4K TV? How will this benefit me? Well, guess what? Most of the games that run on Xbox One X don't run at 60 frames per second. They only run at 30. So, what? Why I'm spending $500 to buy this super powerful console that still runs games at 30 frames per second. <laughs> and it's just like, what, or, what are they thinking? It's like they completely didn't know where to go with this direction of this console. And now it almost seems like, I don't know, is it going to sell? I mean, yeah, the, the X, Xbox fanboys admittedly will just run out and buy whatever, but why would I want to buy an Xbox One X? I don't have a 4K TV and it doesn't run my games at 60 frames per second, so why am I going to drop $500? You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, I don't know. It, it just seemed like a non-announcement to me. 
um, you know, some of the big games that they talked about at their press conference. You know, Forza 7, big deal. It's fucking Forza. We all know about Forza. Assassin's Creed Origins looks great, but has nothing to do with Microsoft. It was just there at Microsoft's press conference. Um, State of Decay 2 looked really good. I have to admit that. That looks like a really good game that I'm excited for. Um, <clears throat> they had Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That looked really good. And I'm excited for more information on Dragon Ball Fighter Z as it, as it becomes available, right? Um, you know, but as I go through all... Sea of Thieves actually looked incredibly underwhelming and not very good. It looked boring. And a game that will only be fun if you're hanging out with friends and dicking around with each other. It didn't look like a game that if you just buy and play by yourself that you're going to enjoy at all. Um... You know, they announced Life is Strange, the, the, the prequel game. Shadow of Mordor looks good, right? No, it's not Shadow of Mordor, isn't it? Middle Earth Shadow of War? Yeah, that game looks pretty good, but the visual style looked a little weird, but the gameplay looked good. Um, and Anthem. You know, they announced Anthem at this and she gave a lot of information about it. It's the new Bioware IP. It looks pretty good. The gameplay that they showed of Anthem actually looked really solid. Um... And it looks like it's a better version of other games that we've seen recently. So that's pretty good. And, uh, you know, overall, was Microsoft terrible? No. But the major focus on, obviously, the Xbox One X being the big focus of their their press conference kind of deflated a little bit for those of us who just don't care about getting another Xbox console. My Xbox One literally sits here and collects dusts for most of the time. And there's almost no exclusives for it that I've ever played. And why do I want to go out and buy another version of it? You know what I mean? <clears throat> Bethesda. Surprisingly, Bethesda was actually one of the worst press conferences this year. And I hate to say that. They just were. I mean, everything they did this year was pretty much something we already knew or a rehash. For example, oh, Doom in VR and Fallout 4 in VR and the Elder Scrolls Online gets an expansion. And there's a new thing called Creation Club with mods for our games, but we're going to nickel and dime you and charge you for each individual mod, which is so stupid. Elder Scrolls Legend card game. It's like, these are all pretty much not announcements, right? Um, if anything, the Dishonored Death of the Outsider DLC was interesting, in my opinion. Um, and uh, The Evil Within 2, obviously, looks really good. And I'm very excited to play that. And the new Wolfenstein were pretty good announcements. But... Ultimately, we didn't get that big oomph. We didn't get, oh, there's a new Elder Scrolls. You know what I mean? We basically got kind of, here's continuation of the games we've already done or lines we've already done. We didn't get anything like new or creative this year from Bethesda. And it ended up kind of being one of the worst conferences. I would say EA by far is the worst. Bethesda was probably second worst conference. Just because that whole first half hour of their conference was just kind of crap that no one cared about. And it took them until like the last 20 minutes to start announcing the new games that we wanted to hear. Okay, Ubisoft. Surprisingly enough, Ubisoft, really good press conference this year. Um, you know, Mario Cross Rabbids looks really good. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, obviously, it's an improved version of Assassin's Creed. We haven't played one for two years. The Crew 2 looked really good, and I don't usually say stuff like that about driving games. But the Crew 2 now having a wide variety of vehicles, including boats and planes instead of just cars, and opening up. To a wide variety of gameplay is great in my opinion. It's a game I may actually get because it sounds good. Uh, obviously, South Park, we're all looking forward to. They had a bunch of new IPs such as uh, Skull and Bones, uh, Transference. There's a lot of stuff um, that just looks really good, you know, And uh, to be honest. Of course, then they had to do Just Dance as well, which they have to cram down your throat every year even though no one fucking buys Just Dance because they saw an ad for it at E3, but whatever. Um... You know, and then a few underwhelming games. Far Cry 5 looks okay, doesn't look great. But then they dropped the fucking bomb on us that Beyond Good and Evil 2 is in development, right? And <clears throat> pretty wild because we no, no one, I mean, yes, there was a leak a couple of years back, but no one really knew if it was real or not. And now we finally got the confirmation and we're like, holy shit, it's been so long, almost 15 freaking years since the first game. And now they're making a sequel to it, which of course is a prequel. But that was like the bomb. The, that was the bombshell of all of E3 was that Beyond Good and Evil 2 was actually in freaking development. It was pretty wild of an announcement, okay? So, Ubisoft was quite good. Um, and then Sony, 
you know, they had something, you know, the Uncharted uh, Lost Legacy standalone DLC was a good announcement. The fact that there's going to be a standalone DLC called Frozen Winds, excuse me, Frozen Wilds for Horizon Zero Dawn sounds good. Days Gone looks really good now that it's more in development. Uh, there's a new Monster Hunter game that's not only Nintendo exclusive. It's now actually going to be on modernized, like, Xbox One and PS4 consoles. That was a good announcement. Um, Shadows of the Colossus Redone was kind of interesting. Marvel's Capcom Infinite was kind of the non-announcement because the game doesn't look very good. Call of Duty World War II looked great. And then they did a bunch of VR stuff that really wasn't very interesting at all. Uh, the new God of War looks good. Uh, Detroit Become Human looks good. Like, they showed a lot of good stuff. Destiny 2 doesn't look good. Spider-Man looks good. So here's the thing. Sony had a lot of things that they showed off that were like, wow, this game looks good, this game looks good, this game looks good, and got you hyped. The problem was the vast majority of things that they showed, number one, we already knew about. Like, it wasn't like they had, here's a new game, here's a new game. No, it was like games we already announced and talked about in the past, but here's more information on them. And most of the things Sony talked about had no release date whatsoever, which lends me to say that kind of sucks. Like, E3, you want to start getting solid info on when games are coming out, and almost every game at Sony's press conference, they didn't have a date for. <clears throat> so it all just kind of leaves you hanging, right? And saying, damn, I wish I had more information. So I'm sure that many people will disagree with me, all right? And it's fine. You can disagree with me. It's my personal opinion. I actually think that this year, Ubisoft won E3. Because not only did they bring the updates on games and new game announcements and lots of information on good stuff. But that Beyond Good and Evil 2 announcement was like the bombshell. Boom! That's the thing that's going to remain in everyone's minds for the next couple of weeks, okay? I think Sony was a close second behind Ubisoft. The only reason Sony did not beat Ubisoft is because they didn't have any bombshell at all. It was just kind of like, update on this game, update on this game, update on this game, and they needed that, okay? But... I know some people will disagree with me and say, no, Sony was better. I think Ubisoft was slightly better than Sony. Then I would probably say, you know, Microsoft, Bethesda were kind of along the lines of the middle. And then coming in way fucking last, as usual, EA. I mean, at this point, EA should just give up. <laughs> Keep making games and just give up at E3, man. I mean, every year, it's just like the laughing stock. And the fact that they went first this year, too. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so that's my E3 recap. The best and worst. The worst moment of E3, Jesse Wellens completely blowing it and losing his, his lines. Tied with when they announced I Justine would be the moderator for the fucking Battlefront 2 segment, which was absolutely a laughing stock. Okay. <clears throat> now, that's it. Let's open up to Q&A. Actually, hold on. I got a couple shout-outs to do first. Sorry, everyone. Let me do the shout-outs first. Then we'll open it up to Q&A. So... Whoa, shout out to Nolber87 who did a 2,000-bit cheer. Thank you, Nolber. He says, you'll probably touch on it, but how long do you think VR, the VR gimmick is going to last for this time? Did you notice something? It wasn't really a focus at E3 this year, which is hilarious because last year it was like PSVR, PSVR. And this year, almost no mention. Only a couple games were glossed over. Within a year or two, I think we're done. I mean, no one talks about Oculus Rift anymore. No one talks about the Vive anymore. PSVR, they are only a few new games. You know what I mean? I think, just like I predicted, it came, it saw, it's going to be gone in a year or two, and you're not going to see many more mentions of it in my, from my take. Um, Mr. Moisture did a, a dollar tip. He says, I had a bet with a friend that the X-Bone X would be under $500, but he was certain it would be $500 plus, even after I told him it's a buyer's market for consoles right now. Keep up the content, been watching you since before ye came out and love your stuff. I don't know what ye is. <laughs> um, Ice Wings Wolf did a 100-bit cheer. Thank you, Ice Wings Wolf. He says, will I buy an Xbox One X someday? You don't need a 4K TV because X One X uses super sampling to push more detailed graphics to your existing HD display from a 4K game, which PS4 Pro does not support. Games you're playing on Xbox One and PS4 from 720p to only 900p resolution, and some as 1080p if you want to stream all the games in full HD. 1080p about FPS is developer choice. Microsoft not going to force devs to run all games at 60fps, but if you run 60fps, thank you for your hard work and showing you the love of gaming. Holy crap. That was a long message. And it sounded like he was reading the PR statement from Microsoft defending the freaking Xbox One X. The only reason I would ever buy Xbox One X... Well, okay, there's two reasons. Number one, if I ever get a 4K TV, which right now, there's no way I could afford it. And number two, 
if there's exclusives on that console that I need to have the console for. But from what they were saying, it sounds to me, game devs are going to co- continue to design for regular Xbox One. So, I have no plans to buy an Xbox One X. It sounds like a waste of money to me. Much like the PS4 Pro sounds like a waste of money to me. <clears throat> Kushiakatori did a 10-bit cheer. Thank you, Kushiakatori. And he said, They're claiming they held back some exclusive announcements. I think they're being honest and hiding it for PSX. I'm slightly skeptical, but we'll see later. So, he's talking about Sony. And he's saying, I guess, that Sony said that they purposely held back certain announcements. Um... Again, I don't know. Um, who knows? We'll see. We'll see what they announce at their own thing coming up. When is it? I think what, is it August? I don't know exactly when it is. I have no idea. But we'll see. But I mean, E three is the time that everyone tunes in. It would be fucking stupid if they actually held shit back. Really, that's dumb, in my opinion. Anyway. All right, everyone. We got about ten minutes for Q and A. If my voice holds out here, so let's go Q and A. Ask me some questions in the stream chat, and we'll get the show on the road, okay? <clears throat> oh, my God. Third Eye the Third is asking, am I going to play Elite Dangerous on the 27th of June? Well, I know absolutely nothing about the game, um, and no one besides you, and maybe one other person has even mentioned it to me. So, again, it's all about demand. If people really think it's a good game and want to see me play it, maybe I'll consider it. But I don't even know anything about it. What is it? I know it was a PC exclusive for, like, a long time. But I don't know anything about this game. Elite Dangerous. Invincible Triple Ds is what I do a drinking fighting game stream, especially with MVC3 on the PS4. I would not play MVC3 ever again. That game was a piece of shit. Um... A drinking fighting game stream? I mean, that would greatly hinder my ability to play the games. I don't think I would do that. Uh, the only game that I probably would like, maybe Ultra Street Fighter 2, because I have so much innate knowledge of that game, maybe I could drink and play that game and actually hold up in some capacity. But probably, I, I mean, right now I have no plans to do drinking streams. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> MXTT was saying, well, what do I think about the games announced after Nintendo's uh, conference? Like, there's a Metroid 2 remake. Eh. I heard about a few of them. I'm not blown away. And the bottom line is, if they were important, they should have announced them during their Treehouse video. So, <clears throat> I don't even know in particular what games they are. If you ask me in particular about a certain game, maybe I'll have an opinion. But, I mean, who cares about a Metroid 2 remake? I don't care. The game's so old. I played, I think I played, no, I only played the original Metroid. I never played Metroid 2. Return of Samus. No, I never played that one. <clears throat> Quinn 800 says, do I like Raw, SmackDown, or NXT right now? And will I bring back smart guys? No, smart guys will never return. However, from time to time, if I have something to talk about with wrestling, I will talk about it. Um, Right now, honestly, I think NXT is the best show on WWE TV. Um, It's basically a lot of pure wrestling, and they're trying out new storylines and seeing these guys be developed. Uh, is really interesting versus a lot of times these people they come out of developmental they go to the main shows and then the fucking people who write for them write terrible things like remember a few weeks back the fucking Alexa Bliss did this is your life Bailey it was like one of the worst segments ever seen on WWE TV it was so badly botched and it's like these are people who are good wrestlers and they're good on the mic and then you put them in that in such a terrible segment of course they're going to fail you know so honestly, right now, I'm like an NXT better than anything else on WWE TV. Just God's honest truth. <clears throat> Bambino asked an interesting question. He says, Phil, you know, for the past few months, financially, things have been really tight and bad for you. I mean, there were times I didn't even know if I was going to pay my bills. It's true. He says, now that you're single, how does that affect things? Um, do you think you could get back to like 2012 status before you were, when you were single, before, you know, before you were dating your girlfriend or whatever? Well, here's how it affects things. First of all, my schedule is freed up a lot more. That's the number one main difference here is if I want to go late on a stream or if I want to do a midnight release or whatever, I'm a lot more flexible in my scheduling, which is good. <clears throat> I now don't have a set time that I have to have dinner or whatever, or anything like that. Um, That's number one. But financially, how different is it? I mean, 
honestly, it's not. Um, a few things, like, yeah, my, maybe my water bill and my electric bill will be a little bit less. Uh, food bill, yeah, definitely, because I'm not buying more expensive foods for to make meals for two anymore. It's just me. So the food bill obviously immediately goes down on a weekly basis. Um, you know, cell phone bill will go down slightly because I'm now only paying for one phone instead of two, but it's not that big of a difference either. Um, the thing is, I still have all the same shit, all the same debt. I'm still stuck with that stupid condo in Connecticut that I can't get rid of. I have this house, and yeah, this house is big and way too big for me. But for now, I want to see if I can kind of keep it because this house is worth a lot of money and it's actually the value is going up like exponentially. Since I moved here, the value of the house went way up. So I want to hold on to the house while the market is going up so that I can have a basically something to sit on. So that worst case scenario, let's say everything falls through YouTube ad revenue plummets, everything's going shitty and I have to sell this house worst case scenario it may be good because I held on to it and the value went up. I'll have all this equity in the house that I make profit on. Maybe then I can pay off all the fucking debt and shit that I have in my name and I'm in a better position. You know what I mean? Like right now in the position I'm in, no, I don't need this big house, but I have this office that's set up. That's awesome. I get it as a big tax write-off. I don't want to leave the house unless I have to. So right now I'm kind of playing it by ear and seeing how it goes. Right now, things are good, but I'll be honest, like this month in June has actually been kind of slow because all I've been doing is playing fighters. So both YouTube and Twitch have been slow. And now I'm nervous come, you know, August, what's going to happen? Am I going to see a big dip now for the summer in the money I'm making, which sucks because now again, my bills, I'm going to have an issue. I don't know. So, you know, we'll see. Um, I don't, I honestly, I can't even answer the question, honestly, because I don't know. I, it, this is all fresh. I've only been single for about a month right now. So it's going to take a while. Plus, I just got rid of the BMW. I just got the new car. So that's a reduction in like $280 a month there. Uh, so I have to see it play by ear and see how things are going to go. I guess we'll see in a few months. But thank you to those who are still here, who are watching the streams, who are watching the videos. Because right now I know it's kind of a dead time with just fighting games going on. Hopefully these events that I announced during this podcast, you're excited for the summer and you'll come back. Especially those who weren't interested in fighting games. Hopefully they'll come back and start watching again. And then we'll see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> Furious Kirk says did I hear about the new game Hidden Agenda from the makers of Until Dawn a gritty suspense game no no this is the first I'm hearing about it I'm excited I dude Until Dawn was like an oddity it was a game that was so much narrative but also did have like gameplay choices and interactions that was like the perfect game for me I could do fun commentary during it right People loved that playthrough. I loved playing that game. I wish there would be more games. So if they're making another game like that, fuck, I'm all over it. But I haven't heard anything about it or a release date or anything, so. Righteous7 says, if August is a slow month, then in theory, more patrons' choice events and playthroughs will have the chance to bring in more tips and cheers, etc. You're right, Righteous7, and you know what? That's something I forgot to mention when I was going through the schedule. Right now... Patreon, if you go to my Patreon, the goal, the monthly goal is set up. In fact, hold on a second. I think I put it, put it here. Yeah, look. This is the event that if you pledge now, <clears throat> during July, you're going to be able to vote. And I'm going to be playing whatever game wins the poll for this in early August during that dead time. So, either Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2, or Shadow the Hedgehog. So, if you pledge five bucks or more by the end of this month, you can vote on which one you want to see. And whatever one wins the poll, I'll be playing in August. So, your actual your question is 100% on the money. This Patron's Choice event is going to take place during the dead time, and it's perfect. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what other questions we got going here. I got a few more minutes, but as you hear, my voice is really hoarse, so I'm only going to take a couple more questions. Tyler the Drawer has been spamming this question all day, so I'll answer it, so he'll stop spamming it. He's asking about Curtis Axel's theme, and do I still think it's the best theme in WWE? No. How can I even say that when he doesn't even wrestle anymore? Where the fuck is he? Um, uh, excuse me. In particular, themes that I like right now, I really like Ember Moon's theme. I really like TJ Perkins' theme. Because it's like 8-bit chiptune style music. And I like that. Um, I'm trying to think who else right now. Uh, I like Kevin Owens' theme. I think Kevin Owens' theme is pretty badass too. 
I would say those are probably the ones that I like the most right now. There you go. All right, I got time for a couple more questions. Oh, I got a tip. Hold on. Shout out to... Well, shout out to a bunch of zeros and ones that I can't read. They did a dollar tip, and they asked personal questions about Leanna. I'll answer to the best of my ability, but I don't want to get too personal, because the bottom line is, as I said, it's between us, and we don't want to make this shit public, all right? I mean, Leanna's already taken steps to make sure that no one bugs her anymore, so I don't even want to bring up personal shit. But he says, do you miss Leanna? Of course I do. Of course I do. It sucks when you're with someone, you know, for two years it was a long-distance relationship, and then for three years, we lived here in person. Of course I miss her. I mean, what a silly question. But, you know, you got to move on. You can't live in the past. Already, it was over a month I've been, you know, not with her. And you got to get used to it. Um, He says, is there one thing you would like to change between the two? Yeah, I would have liked that we didn't fucking basically fall, f f grow apart and, you know, the whole thing fall apart. But again, I'm not going into the details about it because it's our business and no one else's. Um, and he says, have you started hitting up bars and cafes for local chicks? No. <laughs> you guys know what I've been doing. You see what I've been doing. Working. I mean, I'm fucking working. You know, I haven't had time. I'm just working my ass off right now because I need to pay the bills. That's my main concern right now. Work, pay the bills, keep doing what I'm doing, you know, and hopefully by the end of this year, maybe if things are in a better position, but right now... You know, like I said, the first time off I'm actually looking to maybe take for myself is going to be some time in July, and I haven't even thought to... Pl I'm not planning anything for that yet. That's on the fly. I'll have to figure shit out. Who knows? But right now, no. Nothing like that. All work-focused. And then Tyler the Drawer did a 25-bit cheer and says, Tyler the Spammer. Yes, you have been spamming. <laughs> um, Hold on. All right, I'll take one more question. Let me see if I can find a good one. I'm looking for a good question, so don't be offended if I don't ask, if I don't pick your questions, because I'm looking for, like, one fo good one to end the whole session on. All right, I'll take this one. This will be a good way to end the podcast. Ernoan asked a very serious question. He said, Phil, comparing yourself now to the old Phil, the old school Phil who lived in Connecticut and did things differently, you know, before live streaming or do you think that you've changed, you're matured, are you different? Yes and no. Um, at heart, okay, I feel that I'm the same person. I do feel I'm the same fun-loving guy. I come here every day and I share my gameplay experiences with you. And even though it's a different format now, right? Now I'm live streaming and that's really more of my main focus than the YouTube videos. And I don't read YouTube video comments anymore, but now I interact a lot with you guys in stream chat, on Twitter, stuff like that. It's different. Things changed. But I still like to think that is it's still the same me behind all of it. Even though all the methods have changed, I'm still the same guy. And the bottom line is the reason I still do this for a living is because I love it. As much as idiots like to say otherwise, I wouldn't fucking be doing this every single day if I don't... Right now, y'all are strained my fucking voices. <clears throat> I could have easily said, fuck it, I'm not doing the podcast. I'm here for you because I love doing it and I know that you love what I do. That's why you know, I'm toughing through it. And even with the highs and lows and everything, I absolutely love doing this as a job. So there's been a lot of change. I mean, let's be honest here. Change, I've learned so much. I've definitely become a much more mature person, right? Now when I play games, I try to take them a lot more seriously. I want to do a playthrough of a game rather than me dicking around and fuck this game or whatever. Um, you know, I don't do things that could be spun as hurtful or meaningful. Like, remember I used to do things like friend requests, ridicule, and everything? Because, again, I didn't take anything seriously. I thought it was a joke that people would message me on Xbox Live or PSN and think that it was a big thing, you know, so I would make fun of them. I wouldn't do that kind of shit anymore. And just in general, my attitudes towards um, being more open-minded. Remember, I used to hate on things like Minecraft and stuff like that all the fucking time. But now, I, you know, now I'm a lot more open-minded. I try a wide variety of games. Um, I take input from the outside way more. You, I used to be, I know what I'm doing. I'm successful. Therefore, I don't need any outside feedback or any kind of, you know, opinions. I know what I'm doing. Just leave it to me. I'm, you know, I'm a genius. 
And now, you know, I realize that's not the case. I have to listen to the feedback and what you want. And it's, it's an interactive thing between us. It's an organic and interactive thing that makes this work. Lots of ways that I've kind of grown up and improved in things over the years. Now, the other thing is, though, then I can go back to a game. Like, I'm playing Ultra Street Fighter 2, and I'm fucking raging, and I'm screaming, and I'm insulting the player, and it's like nothing ever changed, right? That's kind of the cool things. Like I said, inside, I can still, I still the same fill. I'm just a little bit older. I'm a little bit wiser. I'm a little bit more mature. I'm in a lot more debt. <laughs> but I'm still the same guy, and I still love what I'm doing. So I hope that answers your question. All right, final shout-outs of the day go to Ice Wings Wolf who did another 100-bit cheer. And he says, will you someday in the future do a co-op playthrough with John Rambo? No! Oh, my God. What a silly question. Dude, like, did you not get the, the picture that he didn't want to talk to me? He, he blew me off after I moved across the country. Every time I tried to talk to him, he ignored me. Then he made a hateful video about me, revealing a bunch of shit that he apparently didn't like about me or was mad at me about, that he had never said anything to my face about. So, no, he lives on the other side of the country. We don't talk. Why do people still bring that shit up? Like, seriously, it's so silly. Still asking to this day, two years later, after he literally made it known that he basically hates my guts, do you think he's going to do a playthrough with me? No, get the picture. <laughs> What a silly question. What a silly notion. Um, and Duke XJT did a 100-bit cheer, and he says, Do you, you need more pet hamsters. Well, last week when I was out, I was actually looking at different pets, okay? Um, and I was debating. I was like, gee, should I get another pet? Um, <clears throat> should, I get, should I get another pet or not? I don't know. Um, I was thinking about it. I was like, hamsters are easy, Right? Hamsters are very easy to take care of. Low maintenance. You only gotta... You feed them once a day. You give them water once a day. You give them treats every once in a while to keep them happy. And you change their cage once a week and you're done. It's a very easy pet. But I don't know if I want it. Now, I was thinking of other pets. I was like, oh, maybe a cool lizard. Right? I could do a lizard. I've never had a lizard before. But I'll be honest. I don't want bugs. You know, if I have to get crickets and mealworms and shit, no. So it'd have to be like a vegetarian-style lizard, which I don't know which ones are vegetarians or not. Um, a bird is out. Birds are too fucking noisy and they smell. Uh, no birds, okay? Um, or I was maybe considering getting another different kind of pet, like maybe a guinea pig or something. But the thing is, guinea pigs are very cute, but they're also so skittish. Every time you go near a guinea pig, oh, it runs away. It's like, do I really want a pet that I can never really touch or anything because the thing will fucking run away and be afraid of me constantly? I don't know. You know, I definitely don't want a dog. It's too much responsibility. I, you know, what would the dog do all day when I'm fucking working, right? Probably tearing the house apart. So I'm definitely, maybe cat eventually. Cat would be nice. A nice, a relaxed cat that knows what it's doing. It's not going to tear the house apart. You know what I mean? Cats can, can pretty much take care of themselves. But I'm in no rush to get like a pet. I mean, even though it's cool to go to the pet store and look, I'm seriously in no rush. To, oh, I need a pet right away. You know, the hamsters, you know, they were awesome when we had them. Um, but I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. So, that is it, everyone, for the Hate Live podcast for June 15th. I hope you enjoyed it. It was over an hour and a half. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with my horse voice. I hope that there was a lot of information, a lot of fun. You know, hope that you had a good time. Um, I will probably be doing another one, these, another one of these, excuse me, sometime in July. I'm not exactly sure when yet, but we'll see. We'll we have to play it by ear, see what happens. If there's enough going on for me to do another podcast, I'll do one. If it's kind of dead, then I won't, all right? Um... But yeah, thank you very much for uh, watching the podcast. And that's it. Thanks, everyone. Hope that, whoa, hold on. We got five. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy shit. Hold on a second. I got to give two thank yous. First of all, a thank you to, what the hell? Princess Shazen tipped me a dollar and said, don't open this link. It's a virus. Joking. It's just me dancing. I'm not going to be clicking on any links when you tip me, so don't worry. But Nober87 just did a 6,969-bit cheer. 69, 69 bits. And said, you got to get a bird and walk around Seattle and be a super hipster. Dude, thank you. That is incredibly generous of you. Holy shit. Thank you, dude. But will I get a bird and walk around Seattle? I don't know about that. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> Thank you, Nober. Awesome. Very, very happy for the support, especially because today I'm not live streaming again and I'm, I'm only uploading some fighting game videos 
to DSP Gaming. Probably things are going to be slow until I start with ARMS tomorrow. So thanks for that. I appreciate the support. That is it, everyone. Thank you for watching Hate Live. I hope you like the podcast. I'll let you know coming up if and when I'm doing another one. But until then, peace out. See you later. I'll see you for all the fun new stuff that I announced on this podcast coming up in the next few weeks. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. I'll see you then. Peace out.